The Lord be with you. And also with you. Father, compassionate God, you love the all of the world. And we have come this morning to worship you, to give you thanks, to give you praise, to give you honor and glory as we have been doing. And Lord, let this act of worship may we in some way grow to love you more. We ask this in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. For our meaning is number 379. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Holy name, 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour out into our hearts your greatest gift, which is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever lives is accounted dead before you. James chapter 4, reading from verse 13. The song appointed for this morning is Psalm 49. We'll read from verse 1 to 9 and 16 to 20. We'll read alternate verses. It is found on page 529 in the Book of Common Prayer. Hear this, all you peoples. Hearken, all you who dwell in the world. You of high degree and low, Rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a cover, and set forth my riddle upon the heart. Why should I be afraid in evil days, when the wickedness of those like my feet surround me? The wickedness of those who put their trust in their goods and boast of their great riches. The wicked can never ransom or sell, or deliver to God the price of our life. For the ransom of our life is so great that we should never have enough to pay it. In order to live forever and ever, and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, like the dull and stupid they perish, and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Verse 16. Do not be envious when suffering or such suffering, or when the grandeur of their house increases. For they will carry nothing away at their death. Nor will their grandeur follow them. Though so they thought highly of themselves while they lived, and were praised for their success, they shall join the company of their forebears, who will never see the light again. Those who are honored but have no understanding are by the peace that perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Ale, ale, ale. Jesus said, Do not stop him, 
For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Jesus. 
And very often we behave that way too because we like our egos massaged. And we really do, it feels nice when people big you up. And we shouldn't deny that. But also, we should recognize that that is not what life is all about. We should also recognize that there are others who also worship the true and living God who are not of our fold. And they don't worship in the same way. So it's not that our denomination is better than anybody else's. We all worship Christ and as long as we have the same basic understanding of God, we are all in the same place. And we all are going to get the same rewards, that is what Jesus tells us. Amen. And uh, a genuine believer will be found out in time or at, at, at one who is being ingenuous. You remember the story in Acts with Gamaliel where he says that if it is of God, you can't stop it. Yes. But if it is evil, it will stop itself. Yes. And that is something that we must remember. That we sometimes are working together for the same good. And it is and we're just to accept that fact. If the person is, is not really working with us or working towards the same goal, after a while, their agenda will come out and they will go elsewhere. True. So let us not worry about that, but accept people for who they say they are. Amen. And work together with them for the common good. Yes. And if we do that, we will find that we there are less differences among us. We don't see eye to eye. We don't dress the same way. We don't talk the same way. And we very often want people to be like us. Hmm. And that, friends, cannot be because God made all of us different. Yes. Our fingerprints tell us that. Yes. So we are not a clone of anybody else. No. And we must never accept being a clone of everybody else. No. Because if we are a clone of somebody else, we are not living as God wants us, the individual, to live. Amen. We though must speak with one voice. Yes. Doing the things of Jesus Christ for the good of the whole community. And so we have to be clear about what is important. And what is important is the values and the kingdom of God. It is for us to live those values. It's for us to ensure that those values continue from generation to generation. And it is less important for us to be arrogant. It is less important for us to judge and segregate people because of that separation is segregated. Like how they use segregation in America, where you're not good enough for this. That is how we behave sometimes. And we have to be mindful of it. And I've said it before. We have to be very deliberate in our actions. Or if we don't, we will find that we just go along with the crowd with the status quo and we lose our way 
as Christians. And that is not what we want. We want to be the one who can give others water to drink because they bear the name of Christ. And we want to be the one who can accept water to drink because we bear the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, today we bring to you all our needs. And Lord, they are many. We ask for peace, peace in our hearts as we struggle with daily lives. We ask for peace in our community, peace in our homes and in our families as we do not see eye to eye and we want what we want to be done. Help us to understand, God, that it is your will that we should seek and that we need to be deliberate in doing the things that will please you. We have to be deliberate in living in truth and in love. Creator God, we pray for the church, for the Archbishop of this diocese, Howard, for the bishops both the suffragan and the retired bishops. We pray for all priests, all deacons, and all other church workers, including our lay leaders and our lay preachers, those who keep church. We bring them before you, Lord, and we ask for a special anointing on them as they carry out the difficult task of leading your people to you. And we pray for our Prime Minister, the leader of the parliamentary opposition, and all of those people who reside in the House of Parliament and make decisions on our behalf. Father, we ask that you remind them that they make decisions on our behalf and not in their best interest. We pray for the security forces as they too have a difficult task of keeping discipline within our country. We pray for those who suffer Suffer from hunger, suffer from fear, suffer from injustice, suffer from oppression. Those who suffer from sickness, those who are sorrowful, those who are dying. And Lord, we know that there must be pain. But how we bear that pain, help us, Lord, to not wallow in self-pity, but to be able to honor and glorify you even while we hurt. Lord, we pray for those who support persons in their time of need. Those who take care of the sick. 
those who feed persons who are unable to feed themselves, those who look out for people who are abused and oppressed and remove them from that situation. Help us all, Lord, to understand that we are to live in your love, that we are to be your love in the world, and always strive to do what is right and to do what best serves the common good. I invite us to, in the silence, bring our own individual needs to God. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O Lord of love, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Together we will pray for peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. Sorry and repent of all our sins. For our Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. Then we will serve Christ, accepted with the God, and approved by others. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and, and also with you. Peace of the Lord. Our offertory hymn is number 346, summoned by God, the God who made us. Summoned by the God who made us, rich in our diversity. Gather in the name of Jesus, rich us still in unity. Let us bring the gifts that differ, and in spring and merry ways, sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. Radiant reason from the water, robe in holiness and light, male and female in God's image, male and female God's 
and after supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for me for the forgiveness of sin whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dear beloved Son, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and redeem us. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Matthew, and all your sons and daughters, who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ our Lord with him and in him and through him by the power of the Holy Spirit we worship you Father Almighty with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise blessing and honor and glory be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. We must today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are yes. one body, because we all share in the one word. The second the Agnes gave me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing their songs of praise to Him.
We have a funeral this Friday. I think you all are aware of it. Irene Mickey, she's the daughter of uh, Kathleen Weavey. Huh? Oh, maybe you are more Ruby familiar Molly. with Ruby. Pardon me. Ruby Molly. The daughter of Ruby. Oh, Kathleen Weavey is our sister, huh? our aunt. Okay. Sorry, I get the relationship mixed up. Um, we have Bible study today from 2 to 4 here in the church. Reverend Samuda has kindly agreed, to, or I, wish, I should say offered, to help me with Bible study. And I'm very grateful for his offering because while I have a strategy in place to do all of these things, the fact that somebody else is looking out for you Amen. feels very good. Yes. So he has offered and I have accepted that he will do Bible study here on a Wednesday. And I will come and peek in sometimes because you know me now. But um, I'm very, very, very extremely grateful for him offering. And you all must offer to do other things and I will graciously accept. Yes. <laughs> I grew up in a church where the priest, he just walked around and said, do this, do that, do whatever. He had a well-oiled machine. And 
and things happened like clockwork. And I recognized when there was a change of priest was that he used to organize his people to do things because plenty of it. You never see one around and doing it himself. But he made sure that the people knew what they were to do and that they did it. So that is my that is my vision of a church. So you know, offer yourselves, please. I'm in Kurja conference today. I, from yesterday it started. Um, Lent is coming up. But before I reach there, we're gonna have a cure committee meeting this evening. And I'd like those who are not this evening, sorry, tomorrow evening, Thursday evening starting at 5 30. And I'd like those of us who are hearing me to please speak to the attorneys of the various churches and let them know that I expect them to be there. They are aware of the meeting, but I could do with some help to push them out. Because it's important that everybody comes. What is happening is not for some churches and not for others. And it's six churches and you will get left behind if you do not participate. Sure. And we need to remember that. You will get left behind if you don't participate. You will fall through the cracks. Life teaches us that. You stay behind, you are crowded out. You don't get noticed. I'm not saying that I'm not going to notice them, you know, Mark, because I know that there are people who like to twist words. And that is not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you that so that you understand what the possibilities are. I will make every effort to include everybody. Lent begins next week, Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. And we need your old palms on Sunday to burn. We are going to have a cure service here at 9 o'clock. And I noticed that last night the Prime Minister say anything goes so we are able to hold every jackman who wants to come in the church so we have a nice big sanctuary here that we can fill with chairs leaving a walking space and a space to come up the aisle we can put chairs on one side of the aisle we can put chairs over there. We can put chairs right here. So we have plenty space. Amen. We can hold the whole world who want to come. So from now on, there is absolutely no excuse for not coming to church. COVID still a keep, and we're going to sit six feet apart. We have been doing that. Has anybody caught COVID from coming to ch this church? No. No. Wendy, 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 it, we, the last fight we had, we changed how we sat. We moved from six feet, even though people never tell us six feet, to eight feet because we were wanted to be sure that we were protecting our members. We never tell you that, <laughs> but that happened. Amen. That happened. These seats are now back to six feet apart. So, so we, we are into protecting each other. And we, all of us are not going to come out but I encourage
courage as many of us who would like to, to come. It's lonely being at home. You don't get to interact with very many people. And whether we like it or not, it throws us into some level of depression. I say some level because some people are affected worse than others. And some of us live in that depression without even realizing that we, we are mentally not well. We need to interact with people. And we need to fellowship with our fellow Christians and feel good. For Ash Wednesday, I am asking that we bring a cup, a mug, something you drink tea out of. Make sure you bring it. If you don't bring it, you will be disappointed. Mark, oh, I tell you no. Walk with on a cup. And make sure that everybody knows that they are to walk with a cup. Sometimes we just have to be obedient and do what is told. We can't always resist. Amen. So bringing a cup is one of those things. If I did have money and I buy two dozen or seven of a um, double owner joint, my mother would say, and make some money on it for the coffers. But I'm not going to do that because we need to understand that a participation is important and we need to participate not necessarily as how we want to participate but as how the Lord is leading us and the Lord has led me to use cup and so he's leading you to to use the cup um, pardon me any, any cup you want to bring, you can bring the enamel cup we used to use as a picnic. Any cup, any cup, any cup that represents you, any cup. And walk with your pen then too. I will provide the paper, but walk with your pens. We're going to have a very exciting Ash Wednesday. A very exciting Ash Wednesday. So please do come prepared to wallow in our sinfulness. It's the only time you're going to see me wallow in sinfulness. We're going to come and wallow in our sinfulness and rise out of it with the love of our in the love of Christ Jesus, of the God who sent his son to die for us. So we need to come with open hearts and just experience what God has in store for us without any kind of, then know why she had do this, what that good for, just experience it, please. There is one thing more I need to tell you. Miss Claudette and Miss Cheddar, you want to remind me? Or I don't know. We can't stay till Sunday. Oh, Saturday! Saturday! You are all invited here. Whether you preach or not, you are all invited here to participate in a preaching seminar. I say you are all invited because it's really about learning about the Bible, how to preach. I think they're starting with the Old Testament, but what you get is a sense of what those people were like, what used to happen. So it's not only about preaching technique. Um, it's the Langman School of Preaching, Reverend Annette Brown, who lives in Balaclava, she is a local representative and it is it is non-denominational is not the correct word everybody. it's ecumenical so everybody from any church is invited um the seminar will be held in kingston but through the kind hearts of v saint matthews 
We are going to have a group assembly here on Saturday and you are invited to participate and let us come out and support our sister Annette in what she's doing. Because sometimes we, we have to support each other you know, and, and uh, that is important. That's what the fellowship of Christ is about. Come to church and we support each other. We may not tell each other our burdens. But in knowing that Miss Dawn is there and Miss Claire is there, Mrs. Johnson is there, I can say, yes, things will be okay because they are my stay. If something happened, I can go and say, you know, X, Y, and Z, and they will put me and say, no man. No man. That's why we have fellowship. So I've spoken enough since morning. Our closing hymn is numbered 419. No, 419. I'm going the strength of the Lord. So let us sing with much gusto. Only don't know it. I'll go in the strength of the Lord, in the fasting of my feet. I'll call on the light of his word, nor shrink from the dangers I meet. His presence my steps shall attend, his fullness my wants shall supply. On him till my journey shall end.